happens. Hello and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy and I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Heather Baker, yes. And we are on what I think is going to be our final installment of talking about the Me Too Minneapolis CD because very exciting. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, September 24th, the CD will be released. And today we are delighted to talk to kind of the masterminds um, behind the CD. We, and I'm going to, we've talked about how to do these last names. I'm here with Misha Sumnig. This one I this one I have to take off my glasses and really admit I can see, and Krista Vlinskis. So thank you, thank you both so much for being here. Of course. Yeah, you bet. Thank you so Absolutely. much for this. Has uh, th this has generated so many conversations that I really enjoyed having. It has been the cause of many tears in my car as I listen to it, but it also makes me feel empowered. So thank you all for doing it. But I think I might just start a little bit and just ask you to, to, to introduce yourself. So Misha, we'll start with you and just tell us a little bit about, about you. Sure. Um, I'm a recovering musician uh, <laughs> who has transferred his life more into uh, being a dad. And uh, I still make music, um, but uh, not, not quite as uh, full-time as I used to. So I have a day job and all that. And I live on the west side in Plymouth. I have uh, two daughters and uh, married, coming up on 14 years in just a week. Ooh, nice, nice. nice. Congrats. Yeah, congrats is right. 14 is a good, nice, yeah. nice. And Krista, I've known for many years, but I'm just yeah. gonna ask you to do the same thing too. You bet, you bet, Anne, no problem. So my name is Krista Walenskis. I work at Tinderbox Music. Um, I used to run a record label. I did some music licensing and publishing but my heart and soul is with publicity, of course. And I work with a ton of Minneapolis fans. And so when Misha called me about this project, I knew I was gonna dive right in. There was an, it was a no brainer for me. Planned Parenthood, talented women, I'm on board. Yeah, yeah. As I think through some of the interviews about this, Annie Fitzgerald had said, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no, and this is a definite hell yes. Hell yes. I, love that. <laughs> I laughed when I saw her do that. That's yeah, yeah. With you. I loved it. It's great. And I and I've heard because it's 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 fun, Misha, to finally get to meet you because we've heard so many good things. And so mm -hmm. I want to ask a little bit about the, the origin, the spark of the idea, and I'm gonna look to your direction because rumor has it you may be the he is the one. Point of origin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one to blame. Um, well, I had uh, some conversations with a few different uh, women online who are either I'm a fan of, like I've known them forever in the music industry and were acquainted or just, just a straight up fan. And they were conversations around experiences they'd had with men. Uh, they were either public via Facebook um, or, you know, private. And they all happened within a few weeks and they were terrible experiences. And I was really upset by it and I didn't know what to do besides listen and, and offer support. And uh, so I had this idea of percolating, of, uh, you know, giving women a platform, uh, giving uh, artists rather a platform um, to be able to talk about this subject. And so I brought that to these uh, three women and said, you know, would this be something that would make you feel supported and cared about and uh, empowered. And they all emphatically said yes. And two of them ended up being part of the, the actual crew. Um, so that's, that, that was the origination point. And it, and it just kind of went very slowly from there. I, I had these conversations in August of 2019. So it's a long wow. time ago. And in August of 2019, I said, I'm gonna try and do this in a year. That was my kind of what I thought was not terribly ambitious. And now we're getting down to the line and uh, I mentioned my other computer's busy rendering the video for tomorrow night. So, I mean, clearly I'm juggling everything to get it out the door at the last yeah. minute. <laughs> you are. <laughs> That's how things go though. It really. Yeah. True. And, <laughs> and the last year has been a year like none other. It certainly has. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it has, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And then how, so you take it from that, from a year ago, essentially a year ago, <laughs> how did you make it happen? Well, I just, I started the conversation slowly with people where, um, you, you know, I started with those first three individuals and then just slowly went out from there. I knew I needed to have resources involved uh, who would be technically able to 
uh, record these songs to give people because that's often a, a, a hurdle for people is to have high quality places to record with talented engineers and talented producers and good gear so you can you can really um, imagine a song but then actually complete it and have it sound like it does in your head uh, so collecting is at least two studios and we ended up with sort of three and then uh, as we went forward even more came forward uh, other folks as well so we ended up with I think six total studios that that ended up just flat out donating their time and, and effort and their studio and I just really outstanding. So it was really just an exer an exercise in profound networking. That's the way it kind of all came <laughs> all came to be. That's great. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I want you to give you I want to give you the opportunity to to give a shout out to some of those folks. I mean, there's been a sure. lot of lot of labor and love going into this. Yeah. The uh, thank you. The the first person I spoke to was Jonathan Earl, and he's a longtime friend of mine and has played music with me for years, and he runs Farmhouse Records up in Rue, Baltimore, Minnesota. So he mastered the whole record for us, and nice. we got all the songs, and then also recorded Cara. I think she was the one artist that made the trip out to River Falls. And Carl Lauden? What's that? Carl Lauden? Yeah, Carl Lauden. Thank Lodden. you. Yeah. Thank okay. you. I should say the whole name. Thank you. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. And I'm a musician. I should know that. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so he and then and then COVID hit and we had to cancel all his other sessions. And so then these people needed to find other places in the cities where they didn't oh. have to travel and be exposed. And and that's when uh, Matt Patrick came in from the library and started to take people awesome. on, which we can't thank him enough. I mean, everything he did is fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Yes, <laughs> including working with uh, working with Tina uh, across the country, taking tracks in California. Country. Yeah, Editing know. files back and forth between Jake yeah. Slichter from Semisonic. He did all the strings, the orchestration, and then gave it to Matt Patrick and Tina. And then Matt worked his wizardry on it <laughs> yeah. and made it sound amazing with Tina. Yeah. And, and uh, Kevin Bowe uh, took uh, Lydia Liza's track as well and did all the recording there. And then Jonathan Earl, I think, mixed that one. Um, which if you listen to that track, it's really, it's, it's phenomenal. It's got like dozens and dozens of parts and woodwinds and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. going on. So it was, it was an ambitious piece and it came together really, really well. And Matt Patrick did Annie Fitzgerald, I Know That Sound. Oh, yeah. love that song. So good. He really worked some magic on that. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eric Blomquist also. Uh, River with, Rock. Yeah, with River Rock. I right. worked with Sarah Morris and uh, and at least one other person, I believe. Kevin Bow, and yep. then John Herker with Deck Knight Records, and his studio is called Suburban Serenade, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he uh, did um, Ashley Stills' uh, song. Oh. I'm not fucking around. I can say that. <laughs> you proved that. <laughs> yeah. And he did an amazing job. He's another phenomenal engineer in town that I, I have high respect for. All these guys are. And they're all men. They all stepped up. I mean, think about that right there. I wish we had a woman engineer in there. That would be amazing. But all these guys donated their time and effort and did a phenomenal job. They really did. Yeah, and that, that actually reminds me of something I, I, I meant to say uh, in the beginning was that that was something I really wanted to make sure that a, a man isn't leading and making executive decisions in a women's organization whose entire point is to raise women's voices. That would be really hypocritical. So I, I, along the way, I've always tried to make sure that when I was networking, I was trying to networking, network in uh, amazing women to take over this stuff. So I wasn't making decisions. Yeah. So we, we asked for people, uh, part of the album to be on an executive committee to make decisions and to be on the design committee. Uh, so when I went to my designer friends who are mostly men, I said, you guys are awesome, but uh, who are the women you know? Because right. I, the woman Good. should be designing all this stuff. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And so we the designer we got was Sarah Howley. And as you can she see- did. It awesome blows your mind it's amazing she just did amazing work <laughs> that's right that's she really right. did yeah. yeah she took a lot of pride and time with it you could tell Misha that was a good score so maybe we should say her name huh <laughs> yeah, yeah Sarah, Sarah Howley Howley, Howley yep Howley. Nice. she works for a big ad agency I looked her up but she did that on the side for us so yeah, Pretty. word got out today. She texted me and uh, word got out at the agency that she was the one who did it. And she asked my permission if the agency could share it on their 
personal. Ah. Look what one of our people did. I think she was hiding it because she didn't want to get in trouble that she was doing work on the side, but I, oh. I think her promotion, or at least I hope it Well, does. it's kind of all over the news. Tarn, yeah, right? yeah. Kitty Pages, Pioneer Press. I mean, music in Minnesota, everybody's writing about it, which is phenomenal. So I'm sure her artwork is all over. <laughs> Can you tell us how you went about um, finding the artist to be on the CD? How you guys chose or how sure. that process happened? Well, Misha had three or four people, I think, when he started. Um, and then he called me up and said, hey, do you want to help me out and do PR? And I was like, no brainer. And I was like, yeah. And I started naming a bunch of bands and just started reaching out to all these, you know, women, fem femmes, non-binary women. And I was just like, what would you, would you be interested? And they all said yes right away. And many of them already had tracks that they were working on like that. And what I really love is everybody took this song in a different direction. It's not quite literally what you think. Um, when some of them like broke down the songs and explained what they were about, it was really impressive. Like Maida's is about oxygen. And she talked about how just, it was so phenomenal. She, everybody just did a different, I don't want to sit and take each one apart, but they all brought something different to the table. And I was so grateful for that. Don't you think Misha, all of them did? Yeah, everybody. And that, that's what I love about having a, a subject that's, that's a little broad is because people can go anywhere with it. And, and pe some people went really literal and yep. really broke something really specific, a specific event or a specific time down. And then some people, uh, well, a good example is Elspeth's song about uh, On the Shoulders of Giants, which I is one of my favorite, one. fantastic song. And, uh, you know, and it really just, it just hits you about uh, all the people that have, that were standing on the backs of who Giant. did all the things that they did and, yep, and uh, worked as hard as they did mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get where we're at. And like Tina Shalesky, her song was dedicated, it was about Harvey Weinstein and, you know, she, what was the letter from the woman that uh, was sexually assaulted by her? Tina read that and was moved yep. and touched by it. And um, basically this woman said he ruined her life and Tina wrote a song about it. And she just really encapsulated what, what this is all about. It really is heartfelt and everybody. I mean, Jordan Myers is like, don't put your hands on me. I mean, all of it. It's just so well thought out and it's so diverse. It's not one genre per se. There's some singer songwriter, there's some like Rose track. I cannot believe, I still cannot believe Rose did that in his, his bedroom. And wait mm -hmm. till you see the video he's made. Oh, awesome. They, they, them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Ro did an exceptional job. I, and just the whole the the whole theme of of the song was really about kind of doing a portage, carrying a canoe, as I remember, and kind of having to deal with the shell of that and transformation. And just talking mm -hmm. to Roe, it was fascinating, fascinating. You know, was, Good. I'm so glad. I mean, Roe did so many interviews. He was actually they he, they were very tired after. I can only. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god another one <laughs> i'm like yeah they all want to talk to you yeah so it's a good thing which is which is great i mean and what it what i love about it is it really mirrors <laughs> the experience of the general population i think you know unfortunately i will go out on a limb and say every woman every girl every trans non-binary femme I, has had some kind of experience where it's been um, not so favorable to be a woman. It's been mm -hmm. dangerous to be a woman. You know, we all we all know how to carry our keys like this. We all um, and but everybody's experience is different. You know, True. you've got a you've got a Mary Bu or you've got an Ashley Still where it's it's very it it is really what you'd think of when you think of, of sexual violence. To an Annie Fitzgerald and I know that sound of eggshells mm -hmm. cracking. I mean, it just really. Yeah, yeah, it, you're right on about that and. It's such a um, emotional thing to bring up. And um, one of the things I would like to mention that I've just learned um, is some people who have been sexually assaulted want to name their accusers and some truly do not. Um, they want to distance themselves from it, but want to put their best foot forward and try to help create change. And um, this group has definitely come together. They 
they talk amongst each other, they've gotten tight, they've gotten close. There's really a unity there. And there's a bonding experience where they're sharing and these interviews have been cathartic. And um, I've learned a lot. I, I've learned from some of them that they're very, it's very triggering, which I'm sure is very hard for them. But at the same time, it's giving them bravery to speak up and talk about how uncomfortable this is and what happened to them, but they're so grateful that they have a safe place like this and they've created some art from it. You know, I mean, it's been um, a healing process, I think, for some of them too. I've, I've had a lot of late night texts and emails from the women, um, phone calls, um, just thanking me for doing this. Um, it's, it's been emotional, to be honest. It's been mm -hmm. a learning experience for me too. And it's been a ton of work, I will say but so rewarding and so worth it, you know? I mean, obviously we know there's been a lot of trials and tribulations in the last two weeks with just the, the, our local music community. And I think Chris Riemenstander really touched on that well in, in his piece about the unrest in the Me Too movement in Minneapolis. I mean, it's, it's not just this compilation. We saw Ryan Sayers, they dropped a Dem Atlas and a Prof and, it's kind of an epidemic, you know, and then other, the Doomtree crew spoke up. It's just, it's been, you know, I, I mean, it needed to be talked about is what I'm trying to say. There was an issue. I mean, I know it's been going on for a long time, the age old lesson of rock and roll and guys getting in a band to meet women, but <laughs> um, I think it's good that they're speaking up. They're brave, they're talking about it, they're singing about it and they're saying, this happened to me, this, this is not okay, you know? And it's an uncomfortable conversation. It's like Black Lives Matter, you have to have them sometimes. People don't want to, but when you do, you learn something, right? Yeah. So, I was gonna say, I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, I, during some of the interviews, I found it super interesting when Jor had mentioned no HR, Mm -hmm. to go to and yep. Michelle, with you like being in the music industry and around that you know noticing it and then doing this making it important hearing your friends like mm -hmm. it's so then people will step up and have the conversations yep you're right yeah. it, it, and, and them, them actually singing about it and talking about it has incurred a lot of conversations about it. Um, matter of fact, I know some of the women in this group have talked to men that are in other big bands about it. Like they're at a, a gig, outside gig, you know, Ice House is doing a couple and, and co this, this compilation has been a topic that comes up and engineers and, you know, I don't want to name all the musicians, but I've heard they're talking about it amongst themselves, you know, like, hey, it's really cool that you guys did this and thank you for doing a CD like this. And um, there's been a lot of support, like uh, Jeremy U uh, Yuba Soccer. I don't know if I said that right. Yuba Soccer, yeah. Yuba Soccer, thank you. He did a <laughs> phenomenal job, you know, playing guitar with Mary at the Hook and Ladder. And then, of course, Matt Patrick, not only is he extraordinaire, you know, studio dude, he got up on stage with Andy Fitzgerald and rocked it. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, male support behind this too. And like I said, the studios and, you know, it's just, it's been really heartwarming in that aspect. Yeah. The media too, a lot of the media. Chris Freeman Schneider told Annie Mack, cause Annie Mack called me and she was just really grateful for this whole project. And she said that uh, Chris Freeman Schneider said to her, you know, she said, thank you so much for interviewing me. And he's like, Hey, it's the least thing I can do for, for you, all of you. So it's just, it's been really, like I said, heartwarming and rewarding in that way. It's funny because obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. And, and we're all based somewhere around Minneapolis, you know, so, so we're live we, we, we're in the hotbed for a lot of civil unrest that's happening. But I think in some ways, um, Chris, as I think you just said, when you bring up these topics, and I, and I know, Misha, you said this is one of the goals, is when you bring this up, that, that's when you affect change. And I think that that is the first time in my life that I, well, not the first time, but I, that, that, that intersectionality, mm. where it's, it's not women or Black Lives Matter. It's, they all, they all do. And I think, 
Yeah. Well, and I think there's there's going to be so much change with the music industry now due to COVID. Yeah. You know, so there's a real opportunity for change when venues open again. Right. Right. And speaking about that, I, I feel compelled to bring this up. It's just a publicist in me. Um, we got to save our stages. And Thank you. I think everyone needs to take action with NIVA stands for National Independent Venues Association. You can go to www.inivassoc.org and save our stages because they are hurting and they're such a big part of all these bands making a living. And it's just really sad to see. I mean, yeah, the pandemic sucks, but it really sucks to be a musician or anyone in the industry right now, the layoffs and everything. We won't go way too into that, but you know what I mean? It just, it's all connected. All of it is. It's really, we need to, we need to help this industry badly. <laughs> well, and we need the arts and we need music to bring up these topics because while the Me Too Minneapolis is there, there is a, a focus on the music industry. It goes beyond yep. that. Yep. Agreed. Because the, the Me Too goes beyond it. And it, some of the songs are very specifically about music related things and many of them are not. You know, True. It's, um, the, it, the music and art brings up these hard topics in a way that's palatable, that makes it. Mm -hmm you know, you can, you can woo people in with the sound of the music and the, and, and the music, I mean, ne never mind the messages and everything. It, the music is so good. Isn't it? It is. The whole album is just phenomenal. And I, Misha, I don't even know if we thanked your mastering guy that made the whole thing come together cohesively. Is that the same farmhouse guy? Yeah. John, yeah. I mentioned Jonathan Earl. Yep. Yeah, if, if, job, if, I, if I hadn't, I'm sure he would have already texted me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, what, what do you think your girls will say? I don't know how old they are, but I think you have two girls. Yeah, five and ten. Okay. When no, they I, get a bit older, hopefully, <laughs> what, what do you think they'll think of your part in bringing this to to us and to voice for women well i i'm going to answer that in a vaguely roundabout way you know that that old expression about uh how dads are like hyper protective of their uh, daughters and they they do all these crazy things like meet the boyfriend at the door with the gun and, and all these you know like I, I feel the exact opposite way that I trust my daughters to make good decisions and that I would hope that when they see me being a part of this, that they have the same expectation of men in their life, that they would be as supportive of women's rights. Um, maybe not doing this much work because this has been a lot, but you know, uh, anyway. You know, <laughs> but I, I, important, I, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, be, having that same expectation of their boyfriends that that uh, or girlfriends uh, that they would be as supportive of of um, feminism in general and uh, also preventing and helping people who've been sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, we want to clone you. <laughs> Is there more people like you? Wow. <laughs> You're gonna have like uh, 47 anniversaries coming because <laughs> you're a good one. Yeah. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> it's it's funny to think about that too. Is there there's a good age range uh, of artists oh. on the, yeah. and I won't call anyone out. I think I know at least one is about my age. I'm gonna, uh. I'm gonna put us up. Uh. I am really proud of that. And I, I made a point to mix up the interviews and I put some of the older ones with the younger ones and the younger ones with the older ones and the ones that don't know each other. And I noticed even on your interviews, Anne, you said, I'm sure you all know each other. And a couple of times they're like, no, no, actually I don't. Yeah. It's like, I did that on purpose because I wanted them to have an interesting conversation. And that is exactly what happened. They all texted me later and were like, that was really cool. I had never met Tina or I'd never met Ro and wow, I had no idea that that song was about that, you know? And so it's interesting to hear them say that about each other, 
so that was that was heartwarming as well to realize that um you know people now know each other because of it and the age group and, does mix well and as you said before there was throughout there was a feeling of i know you all have my back oh that was that's a big one i literally got that text earlier today from a couple of the girls um so yes you are absolutely right about that they're, they have each other's backs. They do. And I think that that's helpful too when you've got a wide range of ages because hopefully, hopefully, Misha, your, your kids have a different experience than, than even my, my youngest is 16, than even my kids. You know, you want it. Well, we, and, and to bring full circle, not to cut you off, but what no. you were saying about that is the best advice that the, your, the younger... Oh. Tina oh. gave Jordan Myers, and you should say that. That was. Oh God, I wish I could say it as well as Jordan. What I had asked you if you if you if you had advice to a younger self, and yeah, what was Jordan? Oh God, Jordan was like, oh, and and Jordan's the youngest one on the call. Well, she's. I think his quote is like, "There are a lot of assholes out there, and you don't need them. You yeah. just don't need them." And she went on, and then Tina Shalesky, God love her, says. Do you think you could say that to that, that baby Jor could say that to baby Tina? Without <laughs> missing a beat, Jordan says, <laughs> Baby Tina, there are a lot of assholes out there and you don't need a one of them. <laughs> I love Jordan. She's so funny. It She's was. So funny. I, that, if I had to pick one minute of our experience with this, that minute just made it all worthwhile because we have so much to learn from each other and kind of to get back to Elska's song we oh. are on the shoulders of giants yeah you know, we've all got a little bit and we've all, it's just amazing all of the songs are so amazing yeah there do, do you guys have a, a like a proudest moment and through the whole creation well, of this kind or? of the, what we're talking about a proud moment would definitely be the camaraderie within the group the the harmony that there's been there's been a big sisterhood if you will um you know and there's been some trying times in these last couple of weeks leading up to this event and there's been some murky water and trying to work through all that and and we did but it was it wasn't e easy because you have a, a lot of different personalities and you have different opinions but we all came together and, and as unified as a group and I think I was most proud of that um because it could have it could have all come it could have crumbled and fallen apart to be honest mm -hmm. and it didn't they got stronger and they got a little louder <laughs> I was gonna In say way. <laughs> like that has to do with the respect and trust that they have in you that we heard throughout mm -hmm. the videos Oh, honestly thank you. thank you heather that was really yeah sweet. that's true though oh well i was telling ann she knows me i do not like doing interviews i like being behind the scenes so um but that's really nice to hear and it's nice to talk among friends here i feel like it's you're all four very easy to talk to so thank you for that good and thank you for making the me too a platform to talk about because it's such an important subject don't you think i mean it just it really i'm grateful that everybody's willing to have the conversation you know what do you think misha uh proudest moment um well i'll i'll say my most emotional moment um i i offered to the group to be on the design committee so that uh sarah Howley, as she was doing all the design work, could interact with uh, different artists and other women to, to help build the look and feel. And I was mostly just a fly on the wall. I sent the Zoom links. That's really all I did. And oh, I didn't know <laughs> that. I thought you were on those. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So I was, I was on the, des the, the, committee, the, the design committee. And from like a technical standpoint, I helped out a little bit because I do technical stuff that has a lot to do with design as well um, for my day job. But yeah, I really just let them go. And and the first meeting, Annie uh, Fitzgerald just had some really nice things to say about how uh, she had gotten this email forwarded that I had sent to Krista about um, trying to find a, a, a world and trying to help make a world where um, bodily autonomy and self-determination for my daughters was important. And Annie, 
Annie got a tear out of my eyes just basically talking to me about how special she thought that was and, and what a good father I must be. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you that know, was my most emotional moment. She, she, she brought that up in some of her interviews too. Yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's special. It, it, is, it is amazing. I mean, I think that bond between, and I have three daughters, between daughters and fathers is, uh, I mean, obviously it's important, but I, but I think that there's, I, I think that, that some uh, f fathers aren't uh, as um, willing to jump in wholeheartedly and, and, and be that kind of supportive where, you know, it's, it can be a, it can be a difficult subject to discuss and you're probably not discussing it too much with a five and a 10 year old, but even just to be <laughs> thinking about it, you know, I mean, you, yeah. in a, in an age appropriate, you know, we, sure. Well, you'd be surprised how 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 uh, much stuff has come. Both of my girls are ice skaters, and my ten year old's very serious about it. She has a, a goal of being a gold medalist here in the twenty twenty. I think twenty twenty six. I don't know, one of those. And uh, so we we go to competitions, and there are all these new rules after USADA changed all the rules oh, post the you know big fallout. Um, and so like they can't be alone with their coach in an elevator and some of these buildings are huge and some of these kids are young. So like I have to go to the top and my wife has to go to the bottom and we got to put her in the elevator <laughs> and put her down and one of, or one of us has to go with, and the other can go with the five year, like, it's just ridiculous. You're, you're actually like bouncing the kid around and, and the coaches can't be in the dressing rooms. And how is a six year old or a seven year old or an eight year old going to dress themselves? They can't tie their skates tight enough. You know, it's all these really right. difficult things where the, really the moms end up taking the brunt of it because they're the ones in the, in the locker rooms tying everybody's skates and helping get their hair done. And so dads can't even do by themselves. Single dads, you know, just can't do it if they have a daughter in there. And so thank goodness I'm not a single dad, but you know, they, they would really be leaning heavily on the other moms in their skate clubs or whatever, you know, what have you. Um, that was sort of a roundabout way of answering that, right? <laughs> it was well i mean it's funny because it, it really well done. It, it really brings up an, an important aspect of this is that it's when as women it's, i think of a jordan's song um won't won't don't stop, won't stop. Now. thank you i'm like yeah, don't stop, stop won't stop won't, won't stop me now won't stop me now. i had it's, to look it up too yeah it's, it's there's a i don't want to say it wrong so yeah there well she, but but that idea of understanding your boundaries understanding your boundaries and your boundaries keep you in and keep others out you know and i think yep. the more that women understand that that is what a boundary is about because you you aren't necessarily again i'm not i'm not 22 anymore but that wasn't you know it, it well, used it to be the old give your grandma a kiss whether you wanted I, to or not you know i think you're bringing up a valid point because what she basically said and i remember this interview with you because i watched it recently is just because i sang for you and you feel like you know me and you want to take mm -hmm. a picture after that doesn't mean you can put your arms and your hands on me on my body you can't touch my shoulder please don't touch my back don't touch my butt don't touch any part of me i'll take a picture with you but that doesn't mean it's okay to touch me and I think I remember that, like a couple years ago, Taylor Swift had a lawsuit with some guy from the radio station yep. because when he took a picture, he went up, hit her skirt and touched her. And he says, it was a he said, she said thing, but she was so shocked and her mother was right there because her mother was her manager. She told her mom right away and they got out of there. But it's just sad that that happens. You know, that kind of stuff is really not okay. And it's really disturbing and inappropriate. And if it was Misha's daughter, I mean, it's just so, you know, upsetting. So it's good that we're talking about it. It is a tenuous year. 2020 is, let's face it, sucked. sucked. Just <laughs> and, today alone. <laughs> no good. kidding. And it just is, it needs, it needs to be a conversation. And I'm glad that it's, you know, these femmes are writing about it and singing about it. And it's not like, I said before, it's not like super depressing. It's not like, you know, it's just like this awesome music that makes you really listen and tune in and hear. And those, like I said, those interviews have been so cathartic listening to them talk to each other and, you know, jive off of each other. It's, it's just been like, you know, I just like, wow, I was like listening going, I had no idea, you know, it was, 
it was great. You've done a, I should say both of you have done an exceptional job on interviewing all these, these yeah. films. You really have. You've done I, a really I'm going to miss the conversations. We have to I find bet. a way to keep moving them, you know, at, at quarterly. Everybody can get together and, and kind of make, have a conversation, which would be awesome because it would be, it, it will be so much fun to hear about the reactions to it and, you know, from, from everybody. You know? Yes. I think it's, and I think they liked watching each other's interviews going, oh, I, I learned that about this singer or that singer, this vocalist. I didn't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I think, well, first I should add, before I tell you what I think you should do in the future, because <laughs> I have a really good idea, but what, what would you like to see this be the start of? Well, would you like to see in the future? I think it was Tina Shalesky with you, I think, the interview that she said, I just wish at the end of this, we could all be on first stab stage and list, having a show and backstage and listening to each other's songs in person and then having this camaraderie and uni unity after. I mean, cause I, I miss that, you know, like this has been so much extraordinary extra work for both of us because of COVID and it's okay. I mean, we wanted to do it, but um, I think we do things maybe a little differently, right, Misha? Because we know now what's expected out of the gate, like with the editing and all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> the panic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I, I would do it again, but I would hope that we could have a live show next time. That I really, yeah. really would that. Love was certainly that. the intention from the beginning. Is, you it know, was. I, obviously, being a musician and having played hundreds and hundreds of shows that was what I was really looking forward to and that was as soon as Tina said that in that interview I remember that I was just that hit that hit me right in the heart I was like yep, me that, too. feel that I, I wanted that that would have been great have everybody come together after spending so much uh, blood sweat and tears yes. and songs and everything and everybody gets to be in the same place and this thank each so other rewarding. for their contributions and, and yeah there's there's really something to be said for physically all being in the same place uh, mm -hmm. so that would that would be a nice in the future for sure right like the hook and ladder show is obviously not open to the public but there'll be some just some media there social distancing and and a couple of us there mm -hmm. us, us four i hope <laughs> with masks on and social distancing but um you know it'll be it'll be nice to see Maida and and uh sarah morris that'll that'll it'll be a nice yeah. it'll be short and sweet but rewarding nonetheless yeah yeah so i would love to see next year a bigger a bigger platform and you know not as crazy last second editing right. <laughs> and panic <laughs> sorry i pulled the curtain back misha <laughs> i was gonna say it might have brought your work together closer whatever and with 2020 being such a shit storm too it allowed everybody to soak in and hear and have the time to listen heather you're right um one of the things i was going to say is this project has actually given me daily purpose to help these women amplify their voices it's been very emotional but it's also been very rewarding and if I'm having a shit day and I'm panicking a lot or just not being able to sleep because of COVID and the stress of everything, homeschooling the kids and the job and just, you know, keeping everyone happy, it's, you know, it's something that gets my mind back to look at this. This is a bigger picture thing. I need to throw all my energy in this and make it freaking awesome. <laughs> or at least die trying, right? Oh, so, um, that's Success. Daily purpose, man. It helped. It helped a lot, Heather. So that was a good thing. Yeah, yeah I feel you on the daily purpose. I, I started out in, in nonprofits and then I was at the same nonprofit job for about 11 years. And uh, just coincidence, that was the nonprofit. Um, <laughs> we couldn't see it. What is it? I couldn't oh, see it's it. The, the JJ Hill Reference Library in. Oh. Oh, we'll be talking in a second because I <laughs> he used to be a librarian, so you I know, just I, the I, magic word. You can't talk because I took him off, but I was a librarian for years. Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hair, hair up in the glasses. That's your that's your Halloween costume each year. Yep, yeah, yeah. But sorry, I just had. We will talk after this, but yes, sure. yeah. yeah. But 
Yeah. But so the, just that that's, I, I always wanted to have my life be one of service in that sense that I didn't, uh, you know, my, my plan wasn't to go work for a big company. It was to make art and, and try and, and be in the nonprofit sector and be of service. And uh, so my last year at the library, I basically had to let my staff go and then let myself go at the end of the year. And the company that I trained to, for that whole year to take uh, over my job uh, graciously liked me enough to hire me. So I've been working and then they were bought by a big national uh, international company. So now I work for like a big company and they're great. Uh, but that that's definitely very close to my heart is trying to find some way to be of service. So this is, I, I feel just like Chris that this has really given me a lot of purpose and I feel really good about being part of it. And when I see those emails uh, that, that sometimes come back and forth between women, giving each other support and, and clearly feeling the love and support from each other, that really means a lot. Makes you feel like you did something right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a really crappy year. <laughs> As I laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's important. Uh, laugh, and cry. laugh or cry, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so glad to hear you say that. And Krista, I'm so glad to see hear you say it again because I think you should do this in every state. <laughs> That's my right? <laughs> Take That's it on the road, own. Krista. <gasps> Take it on the road. Ooh. Oh, you want to yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I just think that the sense of community that's been built and the attention that it's gotten and the conversations that it's started, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a CD, but it's a movement. Yes. And, and I just realized we need to thank Andrea Swenson too. She's our MC yeah. and she has really spent a lot of time on this and God bless her. Cause she is like, edited in all her intros and outros for the MC and she did an exceptional job interviewing all the the Very ladies nice. the femmes and I'm just really happy she's on board with us I I, God, I keep thinking I'm forgetting people to thank and and with that being said I don't want to forget is that okay if I can say a few things please do um, sponsors thanking the sponsors uh the current Min uh women's march minnesota planned parenthood of course uh, Twin Cities Gay Scene, and that's a magazine, and then Copycats Media. I did not forget them. And I would like to talk about our socials really quick. We have a fundraiser on the charity GoFundMe page. It's on our, our Me Too page, okay? Me Too Minneapolis. Um, we are also, the CD's available on DistroKid, Bandcamp. We also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, you can catch us all out there on that. And a couple other key things I'd like to mention about the show. It's at the Hook and Ladder, obviously, tomorrow night. And it's $25 a ticket. It includes a download of the album. Thank you, Misha, for doing that. Um, 7 to 10. And, of course, it's Sarah Morris Live and Made Alive with Tina in the middle. And then most of the women did a video in between that. And then Andrea Swenson from The Current is emceeing in and out of those and she, from what I've seen, just a little bit of, of some of Misha's editing, it was really good. So I'm yeah. so excited. I'm just, wait till you see all the videos are so different. Yeah. They're so well done. And um, I'm just so proud of them. They all really stepped up, all of them. And, you know, I think because it's an emotional um, music, they all were really raw and they were really emotional when they did their videos and you feel it. I swear to God, I think Tina was getting a little emotional in the middle of her song when I saw her video. I was like, okay. oh, it was yeah. so good. You oh, just, man. You and her wait. video sounds amazing. Whatever sound it? and video crew they got out there in California to record that, it's yeah. phenomenal. She it's recorded so hers outside. We'll give you yeah, a little outside. hint. And um, cool. it looks like this like white kind of Mexican building behind her. It's just really angelic and then she talks about the the smoke in uh i was wondering okay yeah because it's bad out there right now sadly yeah so what i'm hearing is i should bring a costco size box of tissue <laughs> for tomorrow. well some of it's emotional i'm good well but yeah some of it's I'm really not... like way to see rose video it's just like wow i just cannot believe what a great job but tears of like a proud auntie too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. El Elska, did I say that right? Yeah. She did a really good job in the studio. And then, oh my gosh, Ashley still did hers in the studio too with John Herker and like Dave Russ and um, 
Oh, nice. Oh, nice Ian nice. Allison, bass player. Oh, you guys are in for a treat. I, I'm kind of giving some hints away, but they all did. And then one did like a music video approach. Um, that was Avril, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, and Li Liza did a really great job in her bedroom. And it's yeah. very intimate and raw. And then um, Linnea, I love how she started hers. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give any more hints, but she was a little outside and then came inside and, and did her performance in the basement. And did it include a baby? <laughs> no, no, not this time, actually, Anne. <laughs> but I, I, I do love it when she brings the baby in. But I, this time yeah, like it. Yeah, that's mama that, bear. That's like <laughs> half my half my favorite thing on on Facebook every day is is there's always like a new baby video. Yes. Like an hour after the baby should be asleep. Don't, don't we need that baby video, dog that. and cat videos? And I should say, because she told me it's Linnea's birthday tomorrow. Oh, it, is. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's her birthday, so she's kind of excited. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I said, "Wow, two things to celebrate." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's neat. So I think I thanked everybody. Misha, did we forget anybody? Please tell me that we didn't. <laughs> I hope not. I'm I'm really terrible at that. I always have to have cue cards. Uh, otherwise, I will never remember. So uh, yeah. I I think we I think we thanked everybody now. I think we did. <laughs> I was going to say, Anne, we can't hear you. Anne, I think we lost your sound. Oh, bummer, we did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she waves. <laughs> okay. Now oh, I guess we get to see you tomorrow. Okay. That sounds Thank you. good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Anne. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, Thank no problem. Thank you for letting this be a part of it, too. Yes, yes, it was great. Thank you so much for your support. You guys yeah, really absolutely. helped us. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Our pleasure. Thank